Hello and welcome to this video on Cisco AirWise. This video is an update about QoS marking on controllers between 7.0 and 8.0. It is intended for you if you understand AirWise and QoS marking on 7.0 already. If you do not understand that marking on 7.0, you may want to watch the other videos first before going to this one. So on AirOS 8.0, just like on 7.0, we still use the APQS translation table that you see here. It is a static table, meaning that there is a strict relationship between one value in one column and the matching value in the next column. And in 7.0, what happens is that we typically do not touch the SCP for incoming packets, which means that when an incoming packet here gets into your controller, we check the wireless profile on the WLAN and if the incoming values exceed this wireless profile, we are going to translate the DSCP exactly as they are, both inside the encapsulated packet we send to the access point and the CAPWAP outer DSCP header. But we are going to cap to that profile maximum the cost value, the one p-value. This is why here you come in with 5 and 46 for DSCP. We keep DSCP, but we cap to 4, which is the max value allowed for uh, the gold profile that you have as an example here. At the switch level, you're expected to say that the one p value is the one that is capped and the one that the administrator can trust, whereas the DSCP value is not trusted because we didn't touch it. So as you go through the switch, the one p value being trusted, the switch map will rewrite the DSCP value to whatever map you have in your switch that matches what 4 should be in terms of DSCP. And a classical map would be that uh, 1p4 should be the SCP-34. And this is why when you get to the access point, that the SCP is rewritten to 34. We're going to use that outer DSCP value to derive the UP value that we need for sending the packet down to the client. Again, the SCP is untouched. On the way up, we have the um, client responding with still 46, but this time because it's voice and it's 802.11, the UP value is 6, and the same thing happens at the access point as in the controller. The access point checks the profile and knows that the profile maximum is gold, which means DSCP 34, and therefore translates UP to the maximum of authorized, which is 34. Of course, getting to the switch, the only value the switch has to work from is the DSCP value, and it's going to add, when sending over a trunk, the 1P value that matches DSCP 34, which is typically 4. You get into your controller, still the inner DSCP is untouched. And when the controller sends the packet out to the switch, the DSCP value will still be untouched, and the same process will happen on the way out as it happened on this downstream direction, which means that the DSCP is untouched, but the controller is going to check the gold profile, note that the maximum is supposed to be 4 for cost value, and is going to put that 4 here. I'm representing here two switches, but of course it's the same switch the controller goes through, which means that on that controller the value you trust is 1p, that is to say this value, so you're going to probably rewrite this DSCP value at the switch level based on what DSCP value should be matching for 802.1p, just like you did in this direction. So for that reason we say that on the controller trunk, you should trust cos because we do not touch the SCP, so you have to trust dot one p And of course on the access point, because it's on an access port most of the time, you cannot trust cos because there is no cos, there is no dot one p and you have to trust the SCP. Okay, so that was in 7.0. What changes in uh, 7.2 with this uh, request for enhancement, and therefore it's still the case in 8.0, is that we are going now to cap the SCP as well. So that means that we can trust now the SCP at the controller level. So instead of a trusting cost here, we can say trust the SCP. This also means that because we trust the SCP, in the QoS profile that you configure and associate to your SSID, you do not really need anymore to enable this wired QoS protocol, protocol type .1p that you used to enable in 7.0, and that was the way for you to get a marking on .1p on the cost value. You had to do that because, again, we were not touching the SCP. But now that we also cap the SCP, that feature is not as necessary as it was before. So what happens when you trust the SCP on the controller and on the access point, and you do not enable wired QoS protocol on the controller? 
Well, let's take the example of the goal profile and take a, a lower marking in this case. So you have a DSCP value that comes in which is lower than what the SSID maximum is, so 80 in this case. Whatever the p-value is, we don't really care because we don't look at it so much in the controller. Just like before, we do not touch the DSCP inside the frame, but because this time the uh, DSCP value is lower than the SSID maximum, we translate this um, DSCP exactly as it was and there is no problem here. That's exactly the same as 7.0. And by the way, because we do not enable the wired protocol, uh, there is no one p-value. So we trust DSCP on the switch this time, which means that this one p-value does not matter and we maintain this value 18 all the way to the access point and still just like in 7.0 we're going to use the DSCP value on the outer CapWap header to derive the UP value on the way down. On the way up same thing happens in this case again because it's below the SSID maximum there is no big issue here. The main point to notice is that the one p-value does not matter. Now, what happens if your value is higher than the SSID maximum, like here, I'm getting 46. Again, one p-value is probably 5, but I don't really care. So in this case, in 8.0 and after 7.2, you're still going to keep the DSCP value unchanged inside the frame. So my DSCP encapsulated value doesn't change. You're still going to cap the outer CapWap header, but this time you're also going to cap DSCP instead of only capping 1P like you were doing before. And because you did not enable any wired protocol here, well that value is set to best effort, which is we don't care, set to zero. And on your switch, you're trusting DSCP, therefore that value 34 is maintained all the way to the access point, where again it's being used to derive the UP value on the way down to the client. Now on the way up, UP is 6, DSCP is 46, my SSID maximum is gold, which is video, and therefore my maximum DSCP value should be 34. I'm capping here to 34 just like I was doing before, and just like in 7.0, I do not touch my inside 46. Getting on the trunk to the controller, same here, I'm trusting DSCPs, so I can happily keep the DSCP 34 and my 1P value set to best effort. And on the way out, just because I didn't enable any wire protocol, my 1P is set to 0 and the SCP is still 46. So you give me incoming 46 on the SCP, I make sure that between the controller and the access point, I set the maximum that my SSID is allowing, and same on the way down from the access point to the client. But outside of the controller, towards the wired network, I give you back the DSCP value that you gave me on the way in. In reality, of course, if you trust DSCP on your switch and you have a DSCP to cost map on your switch, it's going to look at the DSCP value and determine what the 1P value should be based on that trusted DSCP value, and it's probably going to rewrite that 1P value to something else, probably 4. And the same will happen on the way up. When you get here at the same switch level, you'll be reading the DSCP value and decide that, therefore, the 1P value matching that trusted DSCP value should be 4, and you'll probably be remarking this as 4. Of course, on the way out here, you're in the controller and you did not enable wired protocols, so that's going to be zero, but here and there, it's going to be four. But the reason why I'm showing zero is just to say that it does not matter, in the sense that we're not using the 1P value for the QoS policy decision making at the controller level and at the access point level. Now what happens if you trust COS in this uh, code 8.0? Well, you can, right? So that goes back to the same type of model as you were doing in 7.0, uh, you trust cost on the controller and because you trust cost, you'd better have some cost. So you cannot just uh, be happy with the value cost zero that we had in the previous example where it didn't matter. So if you trust cost on your controller trunk, then you have to go back to the QoS profile and enable protocol type and say what the p-value is supposed to be. Here it's 5 for platinum, it would be 4 for gold. But what happens now? As long as your incoming value is below the ceiling, it's just like 7.0, there is no big deal, right? Because this profile that we use is set as a ceiling, a maximum value. Anything below is being translated uh, transparently. So let's look directly at what happens when you have something that exceeds the maximum. So in that case, back to gold. I have an incoming DSCP of 46, 1P5. I get into the controller just like before, I do not touch the internal DSCP value. But this time, on the way out of the controller, I'm going to cap the DSCP value. And because I enabled the wired protocol, this time I'm also going to have a 1P value. And this value is also going to be capped. So 
for gold, the maximum 1T is going to be 4, and the maximum DSCP is going to be 34. So those two fields are capped now. You get into the switch, and on that switch, if you are trusting costs, well, that value is going to be used uh, for the switch to decide if the DSCP value here is still valid or not, and it's it's valid, but if it wasn't, the, it would be rewritten by the switch. But in that case, because we cap both, uh, you're going to have the DSCP value being translated all the way uh, to the access point, and then here again, the outer DSCP value is going to be used to derive the UP value of the frame down to the client. On the way up, if I have UP6 and the SCP voice again, my access point is going to do the same as on the way down on the controller, that is to say cap to the gold profile maximum, which is 34. I'm going to have 34 here, and just like before, my inner DSCP is going to be untouched. Getting on my switch, um, there is no trust cost on the access point port if the access point is in access mode so the only thing I can trust is like in 70 the DSCP value so I'm going to use the DSCP value to derive the 1P value here and I'm then getting into the controller where I'm going to use the DSCP value inside to write it exactly as it was and then I'm going to use the DSCP value outer which is my cap um, to derive the 1P value so basically I'm going to cap my 1P value just like I was doing before to the SSID QS profile maximum. But here you see that we have a problem because on the incoming frame I had the SCP-46 and I still have the SCP-46 on the way out. But my incoming frame had a cost value of 5 and because I'm going to cap my cost value outside of the controller I'm going to put that value here as the maximum of my SSID which is in that case 4. So what happens? You're going to get into the switch, which is again the same switch on both sides, right? It's one switch. I'm just showing two uh, so that you understand the two directions. But on that switch, you're trusting costs. And as you're trusting costs, you're going to trust this value. So that means that just like you were doing here, you would be looking at the DSCP value, and this time it's going to be 46, and you're going to look at what should that DSCP value be matching the 1P value of 4. And very likely your switch is going to rewrite this as 34. So your packet is going to leave your switch on the way out to the wired network with a p-value of 4 and the SCP of 34. And that is a problem because you gave me incoming 46 and 5. I don't know why, but there is probably a reason for that. And on the way back for the same application, the same client, what I'm giving you back is the SCP 34 and 1p4. So that's not what you gave me. So that's not the best practice. And this is why we say in 7.2 and later, that is to say in 8.0, what we are capping is the SCP. So if you want to maintain a parity between the incoming values and the outgoing values while still protecting the network marking between the access point and the controller and vice versa based on the SSID QS profile maximum, then you have to trust the SCP. Trusting the SCP is the way to protect your network and to give back to the network the same QS values you had on the way down. So in summary, in 8.0, on the controller trunk, just like on the access point port, you want to trust the SCP. And because you trust the SCP, you also do not need to enable the wired QoS protocol. You can still enable it, but it's not necessary. And the great advantage of trusting the SCP, of course, is that you can work with all the values that you receive at the controller level. And as you know, the SCP allows up to 64 different values, so that gives you a lot more flexibility in your QoS policing between the controller and the access point because you can use much more values than what cost would allow before. I hope this was useful for you, and I would like to thank you for watching.